No, I won't ever fall down You'll always take my hand To show me that I can And through it all I will stand No, you'll never leave me You watch my spirit grow Welcome everyone to New Hope in the Lord with uh, Reverend Joe and Sarah Miles. I'm a fill-in host today. I'm Bob Licata, and I'm here to help you uh, find a path to know who you are. Uh, we, we are struggling very hard, as you can tell, to uh, make a path ourselves that would lead you to uh, the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And there's a very fine line between what you're doing now and what he will lead you to. So we hope you will listen to the show today, listen to the testimony of our guest, and you will see that that fine line is easy for you to cross. Welcome, Kevin Mason, to Great our to show today. Here. Thank you very much for showing up and being our guest today, and sharing yeah. your testimony. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful time. Yeah, uh, gorgeous day, and we, we, we yeah. certainly have a, a lot to be thankful for. Yes, we do, absolutely. You know, I, I, I was amazed when, when we were talking before about uh, how, how God, so many times we, we hear testimonies from people who have had uh, struggles, uh, either early in life or at some time in their life, or you know, they've battled different uh, demons, if you will, mm -hmm. different struggles. And, uh, and yet their life, God touches them and their life turns out totally different than what they ever dreamed. That's right. And then we have people like yourself where you were blessed with a mother and a father raising you. You, you were blessed with a good home. Uh, you were blessed with uh, the capacity to do sports and to do well and exceed and excel in school. Mm -hmm. and, and, and your life took on a different meaning, a different purpose, and a different direction in a sense, and yet it's the same place, led you to the same place. So uh, just briefly, if you could give us a quick overview of, of how you felt your life walk uh, led you from you know, one place to the next, to where you are now. Yeah, I grew up in Baltimore, and, uh, and growing up in Baltimore in the inner city in that time, uh, Basically, I guess I, I, I was born in the 50s in 1956, but I'm a child of the 60s, basically. Mm -hmm. And everybody knows the turmoil of the 60s. <clears throat> I had two older brothers uh, that they, one's 12 years older and one was like 14 years older. So, so they were children of, of a completely different uh, mindset, right? Because my right. brother was 14 years older than me, and I know he did not think, he did not relate to the 60s at all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, uh, you know, you had the Vietnam War, which my brother went to the Vietnam War. I, I actually lost a cousin in the Vietnam War. Oh, okay. Oh, so um, he was exposed to some heavy stuff. Yeah, I mean, the, the Martin Luther King's assassination, I was like Kennedy. 12 years old, I remember that. Mm. Uh, uh, the National Guard walking through the, sh the streets and the riots and all of that. But now you were raised, your, your mother and your father raised you in the Methodist Church. They, they not just encouraged you to go to church, right? Yes. They, yeah, they, 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 they raised me in a church, uh, Orchard Street Methodist Church in Baltimore, which is now a historic site because they found a, an underground railroad tunnel okay. that led to where the B&O Railroad. Nice history there. Uh, so it, at a time when they were going to, tear it down, they found this tunnel, so now it's a historic site. Have you been back ever, uh, uh, occasionally as, your, as an adult to... Uh... I've been back, but I haven't been back to that church. I mean, I've, I've driven by <coughs> the old church because uh, the area is totally kind of rebuilt around it. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't resemble yeah, it's the, not, the doesn't church have the from same, my childhood. It doesn't yeah. have the same childhood memories. Yeah, right? when you're a kid and everything looks so big. That's and everything's, true. Right. You know, when you go back and you're like, man. Right. It didn't seem this way when I was but, a kid. But it was a regular thing for you to go to church. You went to Sunday school, right? Yeah, I went to Sunday school. I lived about a little over a mile away. Said I always walk to wow. Sunday school. It's a long walk for a kid. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I like to sleep in, but my parents, when their alarm went off and they called me, I know, it's yep. time to go. Time to go. 
So and I and I and I enjoyed being there. Right, right. It was that it was the initial shock of getting up in the morning and walking. Yeah. But now the, the the and you used to go to actually to the church service occasionally. Right? Yeah, we go As to you got the church older, service. Yes, it, it, it was uh, the the uh, right now I attend a Pentecostal church, but the Methodist service was a very structured uh, service with hymns and announcements in in a particular order. Right, right. So you you had a sense of. Um, um, when 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 the church service flows that way, there's a sense of orderliness that comes to your life, and and uh, things seem to have be in place. Mm -hmm. So so it, it kind of you 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 get that after a while, it, it gets into you, um, and so you you went on um, in, into your teen years, and uh, you you kind of had that as a foundation. Right, to, right. Yeah, yeah, I had that and. You know, and, and when I got to be about uh, t 13 years old, my parents no longer, uh, it wasn't a thing where I had to go. Right. They gave me an option to go and not go. Mm hmm And I kind of fell away from the church uh, for a while, uh, even though uh, there was a young reader's Bible that my mother got me when I was at, uh, in elementary school, <coughs> and I used to read that often. Mm-hmm. And uh, sometimes I would record myself with that and listen to the tape. That's pretty I unusual prayed a lot. for a teenager. Yeah, and you were praying, right? I yeah. prayed a lot. I, you know, my 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 uh, actions with God was, you know, it was pretty consistent. Mm. Uh, but your prayers were directed towards God as just God Almighty. Uh, you know. Yeah, just just uh, my understanding of who God is. In the Methodist Church, uh, there I don't remember as many altar calls mm -hmm. as as I've seen in Pentecostal Church. I don't remember being formally asked uh, to have Christ as my Savior and Lord. I don't remember that experience. And when I was attending college at the University of Maryland, there were some brothers uh, in my dorm, and they one of the brothers used to frequent my room because we had good snacks. You had the snacks, huh? Yeah, we had the good snacks. <laughs> so we, and we started to have a, a conversation about the Bible one night, and he just he asked felt, me. He felt, you, if you're going to feed me snacks, I've got to feed you yeah, the Yeah, i got to feed you. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and one of the guys in his little group looked like the spitting image of Billy Graham. Uh -huh. and, uh, Did like he a preach? young Billy Graham. <laughs> and, his, and he had a manner like you could see this kid becoming a minister. Uh, I don't know whether he grew up in a family of ministers, but he just had that manner. And with your church background, you had, he, there was nothing offensive about this. You, you, you received him no, as well. I received it. I, right. He said, have you ever asked Christ to be your Savior and Lord? I thought about it, and I'm like, uh, I don't remember doing it, but right. I'll, he'd say, you want to do it right now? I'll say, yeah, I'll do it right now. It made sense to you at that point. Exactly. You know, now, in the Bible readings that you had been doing, you read from both the Old and the New Testament? Yes, read from the Old and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. I particularly like reading Proverbs over and over. I like the, the, the philosophical, poetic books, the Psalms, Ecclesiastes. I'm, I'm wondering if you're familiar with this verse, because this, this, this verse jumped out at me today. And it's from, I believe, the King James Version. It's Romans 8, 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life, life and peace. And peace. Yeah. It just seemed that spoke to me when I read that. It seemed that it, it cap encapsulated some of the experiences you you had shared with me earlier. That you had a life of of peace and and direction. And even though you may have um, been exposed to the carnal world, <clears throat> you weren't. Your mind wasn't set on it on, on on obtaining the the carnal things of the mm -hmm. world. Did did you come to a point in your life later on where you you uh, wanted to taste of the carnal fruit of the world? Yeah, I mean, I I I grew up uh, like I was telling you in sports, and and, and in addition to that, uh, my father liked horse racing, so I was exposed to that as a as a kid, and and we went all over. And uh, you also said something about your mother being uh, working in, in the sports arenas in yeah, Baltimore. Yeah, my, my mother worked in sports arenas. And that gave you a certain privilege, y didn't yeah, it? Yeah, that gave me a certain privilege. I was able to get 
I know what it is to sit courtside to see basketball that games. That had to be exciting. And I ate hockey, and, and wow. she worked in two different places, so I was able to see the Baltimore Orioles play. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, I used to get there before they would let the crowd in, and, you know, they'd have batting practice before the crowd, and I would just throw the balls back. I would just chase the balls down and throw them back as they come up into the seats. And you had an autograph book, uh, right? Yeah. Didn't, yeah, I had an autograph book. I had... <laughs> Got I don't first, know. You got your first pair Many of hockey, hockey uh, uh, ice skates uh, at that, yes. around that time? Got got a pair of ice skates <laughs> and started playing ice hockey in the youth league. And I excelled at that and ended up playing in an adult league as a teenager. And then I ended up playing in a... See, uh, that, uh, that, that kind of a, of a lifestyle, I'll call it, is uh, something that I can relate to. Uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs of America, they... they focus on that, YMCA, YWCAs, they used to focus on that, of getting the kids involved in activities that were healthy and, uh, and exciting and, you know, gave them a sense of, of uh, enjoyment of life without the sitting in front of a TV or uh, all the things that I grew up with where, this, you know, hanging out in the street, just hanging out. Yeah, um, we used to make things. Yeah, I mean, that the we whole different We made wagons, right. we made skateboards, right. we made the, you know, I wish we had a, had been able to patent something, some and, of the and, stuff and that we made. Le and let me ask you, what was your first bat made out of? My first bat was probably uh, a, a little board that we shaped and we uh, narrowed the handle. Oh, you the got handle. fancy. We narrowed the handle and we put uh, tape around it. Well, ours, you know, ours, it was like, ours. A, like a piece of wood about that wide and maybe about that thick. That's cool. Almost like a, uh, a cricket um, Yeah, almost bat. like a cricket bat. We, yeah. my, mine was a base, basically a, a, a cut-off uh, broom handle. <laughs> you know, we, <laughs> yeah, we did ball. that too. We yeah, did that too with stick ball. With, with, stick the, ball. with yeah. a spalding, you yeah. know, and you'd play the stick ball. And, right. and that was the, you know, the whole idea that, that you know, if you were engaged in life in a, in a healthy, productive way, as you were, and... Um, I was to some extent, but not uh, quite the uh, you know the, the the neighborhood camaraderie that you talked about was a little sounds like a lot more than than I experienced, and that, that's good. So now you 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 in college, and when you talking to this fellow classmate, uh, what was the experience of of accepting the Lord? You 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 when I accepted the Lord, he asked me. Do you feel any different? Mm. And, and 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 I guess I right after I accepted the Lord, I I I I, I told a fib and said, eh, I'm, I, I mean I, I I don't feel so much difference. But actually, when I did that, it felt like I was burning up inside. Uh huh. You know, it felt like there was a furnace in me for of a brief time, probably like maybe fifteen seconds or so, thirty seconds. But it was unusual. Uh, yeah. Like a yeah. flush. Yeah, it was. It, yeah, it was like almost like I could feel like a flush coming on. Mm. And uh, and I had never experienced that before. Right. Yep. So. Uh, so that kind of told you that that uh, something this had is, yeah been, something had taken place. Yeah, yeah, it was real. Right. It wasn't right. just you mouthing some words and saying, "Oh yeah, I'm I'm different now. I'm I'm a whole new creation. I'm a really new creation." Right. Right. That's the that's the thing that that. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they they have the John three sixteen. Uh, they're familiar with it, or they they publish it. And a lot of churches will have altar calls. Mm -hmm. The uh, I won't call it a mistake, but maybe the thing that people don't seem to um, emphasize is that it's not a ritual; it's entering into a relationship. Mm -hmm. And, and you already had a relationship with God. So when you said the sinner's prayer or said, Jesus, be my Lord, and, and I believe in you, you weren't really having that for the first time, that relationship experience, because you already had one with God. Mm -hmm. But yeah. yet now it's more focused on the person of Jesus Christ. Right, right, right. Yeah, and I and, and 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 I started to, I believe, glean a little bit more out of the Bible. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I had an experience where, uh, when my grandmother passed in 1978, we went to my uncle's church, and uh, the pastor said, 
there will be people in the church that will be given a word of knowledge and they may travel through the church and touch somebody. Now this word of knowledge uh, experience, was that something you had ever ex uh, been familiar with before that time? Before? No, I really, I, w I really wasn't familiar with it. This was a Baptist church that my, my, uh, my uncle was going to at the time. Mm -hmm. and I had never really uh, you didn't heard know about, about it. it. I didn't know anything about so, it. So Even what I had read about spiritual gifts, but I wasn't yeah, okay. familiar with a, a right, word Right, right. I mean, obviously, you, you, we read about it in the Bible, but when you actually uh, you know, hear about it in, in, a, in a, a living setting, you start to wonder, well, what does it what really mean? What is the word of knowledge? But yeah, that, that day, a young minister, about five rows behind me, uh, the minister had asked everybody to pray. I can't remember about what, but as uh, after the prayer, this young minister came up to my row, reached over, grabbed my hand, took me up front, and he basically said everything that uh, I had prayed about. And I wasn't, I was hardly audible, so it was couldn't have heard something, you. It's something he couldn't have heard. Right. Uh, and that was really amazing to me. I'll bet that That was an amazing you. experience. Yeah. And then he said a prayer for me, mm -hmm. you know, to teach me how to pray and what to pray for. Because a lot of times uh, you pray for things in a mindset that uh, of, of goals mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you may, may have. Needs. Or needs. Right. You know, but uh, he wanted my prayer, I think, I mean, my prayers kind of changed to be more uh, God focused in terms of thanking the Lord, praising God, and asking of the Spirit, you know, how can I be used? Mm -hmm. Show me my <clears throat> gifts. You know, what can I do? A much fuller experience than 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 you had uh, really anticipated. Then he was he was teaching you something that you you hadn't known before. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, that is, you know, because when it really comes down to it, um, we sometimes think that it's a bless me kind of thing right. where uh, we're telling people, you know, you can be this, you can have that, you can get the other thing. But we miss the point that all, we're, all, all God wants to do is give us tools so that we can go out and help other people exactly. receive the knowledge of him and his salvation and establish a relationship with him. Absolutely. Yeah, God is love. God is love, and He basically want us to be a conduit of love. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. That where where uh, the distractions that He knows we experience in life, mm -hmm. whether it be family, job, you know, when I read the verses that uh, that say that basically you shouldn't love anything or anybody above Him. Right. I understand that in terms of if you did, then possibly the Lord might want you to do something, the Spirit might prompt you to do something, but somebody that you love could deter that, mm -hmm. you know, because oh. maybe they could say you, there's something the Lord wants you to do at a particular time. You say, oh, somebody, maybe a spouse or, or, or somebody that you, you care about Child. says, oh, you don't, you don't have to do that right now. You right. can, you know, do that later. You can do, always do that tomorrow. Well, we we have we have a situation today where um, a lot of parents, uh, you know, get their kids involved in sports teams, and the sports teams have games on Sunday right. morning. Right. And so the parents have have a tough choice, and a lot of times they make the choice that well, the sports team is very important, and I'm not going to go to church. I'm not right. going to take my child to church. And after a while, they've set an example where. They've eliminated the experience of going to church and replaced it with the sports team, which now becomes the overwhelming important choice to make. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. It's that's a struggle. True. It's a real battle. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> the enemy of our souls, he does not care uh, if we become successful, if, if, if uh, we make a lot of money, if we, if we have a big house or a car. He doesn't care about any of that. No. He, what he cares about is that you're not fruitful in this spiritual battle mm -hmm. that takes place, that in, 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 in an atmosphere we can't even see, right. things right. that are being done, prayers that, that are needed, mm -hmm. uh, commitment in certain areas, uh, 
that are needed in terms of just kind of plugging in and using the gifts that you have, whatever gift God reveals, mm-hmm. and being available. You know, uh, most churches, that's the biggest problem that they have is that uh, most of the congregants are not available. Uh, you have a bunch of people, uh, like a core group, wearing a bunch of hats. Right, right, doing most kinda of the work. Kind of burning out. Right, and, uh, right. It's unfortunate, but so many uh, uh, organizational uh, structures uh, suffer from from that kind of a thing. Uh, it's more like uh, we have a lot of spectators and not that many players. That's so, right. So you know you have a team on the on the field, but uh, everybody else is up in the stands. That's right. That's right. Now you went on for in, in, in after college. Uh, you 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 decided that you needed to work, and you you uh, moved out into the workforce, and then right. you. Uh, uh, relocated to New York, which uh, you had been to many times before, and right. and uh, you, you got married. You, you know, you had. I don't remember you telling me if you had children. No, I have no kids. <clears throat> no kids. So you you were able to focus a little bit. Now you you started attending this church. Well, how did it come about that you started attending the Pentecostal church? Uh, I really don't know what happened, but I had a spiritual experience which there are so many things that happen that it, it, it would probably take too long to ex- describe everything but needless to say uh, after this experience which my churches were basically churches of the airways and that's who I supported mm. and I looked at Charles Stanley and Fred Price and all these different ministries okay, okay. and that was my church right and it was but I w- but I didn't have the fellowship okay and uh, I felt the spirit prompting me, find a church, mm-hmm. find a church. You need more than this because right. basically like you're a lone wolf out here, yeah, you know, yeah, and you yeah. really need support. It's the fellowship of being around other fellow believers. That yeah, makes iron shopping's iron. Yes, exactly right. You know. you know, some of the ideas that one pastor might give you may lead you to have questions and then you talk to somebody, that you, it helps you to resolve those questions. But if you don't have anyone to talk to. Right, exactly. Exactly. So this, you know, I, I really don't know why I walked into that door. I can only say that's where the spirit led me. Mm-hmm. And uh, because where I'm located, there's a cluster of churches, a number of churches I could have walked into. So you're in Yonkers now, right? I'm in Yonkers. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I walked into this church, uh, Yonkers Christian Assembly. Uh, and I like the makeup of the church. Uh, it, it's like a multicultural church. There are people from all over, people from Africa, from Europe, from various places. And that right. it, was, it was, and I didn't grow up with that experience, mm-hmm. you know. I grew up in African American experience where, you know, churches, I mean, they, they say that uh, Sunday is one of the most segregated days of the week. I know, you know I know, it's because true. Because of the, uh, yeah, the congregations, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> most congregations go one way or the other, but this was like, a total spread, had a lot of kids in it. And so and, you uh, continued to go there and, and, and started to uh, get involved? In yeah, it? started to get involved. I got involved with the choir. I got involved with the worship team. I got involved with, uh, they, there was a, a, a sister that came along and she had experience in drama. So I got involved with the drama ministry oh. and church put on quite a few plays. Uh, and that was... Uh, it was a it, it was a beautiful experience. It's, I mean, it still is a beautiful experience. Um, and what's, what are you involved with now with the church? Now we have a, a young minister. Now I'm in the intercessory prayer mm-hmm. ministry, where we uh, we pray through the week, various issues uh, on our phones. There's like a crew app that uh, people are involved with that are in the church and needs. Sometimes so comes through that app, okay. or it needs things to pray about, mm-hmm. people to pray for. Uh, so uh, that's my main thing that I'm involved with. We we meet on the phone as a group on uh, Saturday mornings. There's a prayer line that we connect uh, with a code, and we pray for about uh, an hour collectively. Uh, about the needs of the community, the needs of the church, the pastor's family, various various, various ministries mm-hmm, in the mm-hmm. church. Well, that's important to to uh, uh, have that sense of purpose. Uh, but have you had uh, 
any experiences where you received and saw answers to prayer that, that encouraged the people in the group? Yeah, there it, it's like uh, there have been people that have had uh, physical ailments that uh, were nervous about a diagnosis or nervous about uh, uh, an operation, mm -hmm. and and uh, and we've seen people pull through with flying colors at various times. Mm -hmm. And the church, you know, and we pray about various uh, aspects of the church. Church needs a new roof. Uh, things happen where the IRS gave the church. Uh, thirty thousand dollars that that the church had overpaid, and uh, the church <laughs> connected happened. with people that did the what, right now they're doing the roof uh, through some kind of a grant where the church doesn't have to pay for a lot of the work that's being done to the that's roof. Amazing, and they're gonna install s solar panels. So I know that prayer does change things. You don't know how. Right. God is going to, because it's like, how are we going to come up with the money to pay for a roof? How are we going to do, we have to repair our sidewalk. How are we going to come sure. up with that money? Right, right. We, 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 and, uh, we think sometimes that, uh, that in order for us to accept a, a, a prayer as, as answered, it's got to be supernatural outside of the realm of, of the physical. But sometimes right. we forget that uh, the coincidences that so just things that just seem to happen and fall into right. place. They're just uh, as overwhelming as, as we, we could imagine. Well, Kevin, I, I really appreciate you coming on the show. All right. I wish we great. had another hour or so to talk. <laughs> There's so many more topics to, to cover and so many more details about you know, your experiences that I would love to have been able to share. Yes. The uh, uh, issues of time always enter into it. Yeah, it, 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 the time flies when you're having fun. Yes, indeed, <laughs> when you, especially when you're praising the Lord and That's giving right. Him glory. Praising the Lord and giving Him glory. That's right. 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 You know. Well, again, thank you for coming on to the show. Glad to be here. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, folks, whoever's watching today, young or old, we're not here to preach to you in the sense that you might think, oh, they're just uh, telling me what to do. Uh, we're here to share with you, and that's, that's what Kevin's been doing is sharing, sharing some aspects of his life that bring him to a point of, of uh, closeness to the love of God, a closeness that, that it, it, it fills his life, it fills his heart, but also it spills out. It spills out to other people, it, it, and it strengthens him and enables him to let it spill out to let it flow out. So that experience only comes through a knowledge of God's love. And Jesus came to share that knowledge with the whole world. He and commissioned his disciples to teach others and he commissioned them in powerful ways by his, by his life, by his you know, actual presence with them, by his death by his resurrection and by him after his resurrection by communing with them again and especially by giving them the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we ask you today, turn to God, turn to Jesus, receive him into your heart and your life and your life will be changed and blessed. Thank you for watching today. Jesus, Jesus.